What is up? We are back with a new episode of Movie News, and we have a ton to talk about, so we're going to get right into it. One of the things that we had kind of forgotten about in the shuffle of everything with the coronavirus is there was a female-led Jump Street movie that was supposed to start filming. Um, it was early reported that Aquafina and Tiffany Haddish could have had the lead roles, but it wasn't necessarily 100% confirmed, and a lot can change than that what is it like how excited are you hearing about a female-led new jump street film i actually i'll admit i haven't seen the og jump street movies with like jonah hill and, and uh, shang tatum so i'm like not like against i'm just kind of like indifferent just because i haven't seen the franchise although like aquafina and tiffany haddish are like reliable comedic talents i think they i think that would be a definitely a great, great duo to see like just play off each other um I don't know. I, I, they, that'd be a cool duo if that's if the, that is the people they choose to hire if this project um, keeps developing. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one because uh, Christopher Lord uh, and it's Phil Christopher Phil Lord, Lord and Phil, Miller, Phil, Miller, Phil Miller, Lord and Christopher. Miller, Miller. Yeah, I, I always mix up their first name, yeah. last names. Um, but they're involved. Uh, you guys may know them from Spider Verse, the original Jump Streets. Mm -hmm. uh solo before they got kicked off lego movie the lego movie uh a lot of hits mm -hmm. and one of the things that i'm really excited about also is aquafina uh, if you've seen her in the farewell she is f fantastic dramatic chops and if you've seen her and um oh gosh crazy rich asians crazy rich asians there's the oceans oceans eight right mm -hmm. or yeah oceans is eight. that what they call it yeah, yeah. oceans eight uh, and she's great in that, which is also like a version of a female-led version of the other movie, which is Ocean's Eleven. Right. Um, so I think she could definitely do that. She could pull off the comedic roles, you know, those little like half-serious moments that they have in the movie that kind of make the movie so funny. Right. I think she can really pull those off. Um, Tiffany Haddish, I'm kind of less sold on. I feel like it, it depends on the movie I see her in. I don't, I don't think she's a bad actress. I'm just not necessarily like sold on her beyond her comedy chops. Right, I got you. But we're going to move on to maybe the film that I'm most excited about that releases in February, Malcolm and Marie. Uh, it's reported that it'll get the full award season treatment. I am hyped as can be for this film. John David Washington, Zendaya, Sam Levinson, who, if you haven't seen Euphoria, you have to go see Euphoria. That show is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just keep on hearing better and better things about this film. It's a small film. It's about a couple who are movie stars, much like they are in real life, uh, and stuff unravels over, like, one single night. It sounds like a good starting point for a film. It's shot in black and white. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, I feel really excited about this. This is a perfect time for actresses like Zendaya and John David Washington, who are really on the rise right now uh, to get some of Zendaya is now an Emmy award winner. Yes, she uh, is. Yes, she after is. Euphoria. So she's on a role. John David Washington is getting every single role in Hollywood right now. So I'm super hyped about this, but what are your thoughts? It just amazes me that this film is being primed for like award season when this thing literally like, did not exist like a few months ago like it was a night from what i from what i understand it was like an idea between zenday and sam levinson that just like they were like all right let's do it and like the, the movie was shot over like a few days socially distanced and the fact that like it appeared like the product that emerged is apparently as good as people are saying it is and the fact that they were just like almost on like they were just like we got it like let's do this thing now and like there's no like, there's no plan they're just kind of like let's do it and the fact it just came together like so well like that spark of creativity i'm like that's what i'm fascinated by and um yeah john david washington's and daya like like that's a, that's a definitely gonna be an interesting interesting duo so i'll be intrigued to see how this plays out the oscars are pushed to april i believe april right yeah yeah the april. deadline's the, somewhere in february got you okay so the oscars are in april they start voting like i mean i'm, I'm just i'm just really intrigued to see what happens because again like like something like Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood like required so much like big process and like planning and whatnot and here this thing just came out of nowhere and already it's being geared for so much so I'm intrigued to see when it comes out on Netflix. And that's one of the things that's so exciting about it. It's literally two people who had an idea mm -hmm. during COVID, they wrote a script, they got a small 
cast and crew, you know, Zendaya and John David Washington were all doing their own makeup and, you know, hairstyling and wardrobe. They all did that stuff on their own. This was like the definition of a, like indie cinema, even with a, you know, Hollywood stars. Mm -hmm. And they shot it in July. It was a pretty short shoot, I believe. And Two months later, they showed a 20 minute reel to possible buyers and it got in a bidding war and sort of sold for 30 million. Like that is, that's like a beauty of independent filmmaking um, that you can, you know, it's, you have that idea and then you go make it. That's part of the reason I'm so excited about getting to go that's see this spark. film. It's that spark. You just, you like, you hit a gold, you hit a gold mine, like, and you didn't expect to be there. Like that's, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be an uh, interesting time when, when this thing comes out. Yeah, and the connection between Sam Levinson and Zendaya seems to be really strong. I'd be curious if that's one of the next like big act, actor-director uh, combos for years to come. So moving on to Ma Rainey, we have it getting very, very good uh, reviews from critics so far. Now, we don't get to see the film till December, but those who have seen it ahead of time have really praised the performances of Chadwick Boseman and Viola Davis, saying both of them are definitely going to be nominated. They, they're that high on this film mm -hmm. and that it is very plausible that one or both of them could win. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really exciting news, uh, especially this is the last time we're going to see, get to see a film of Chadwick Boseman's. Uh, so I think it's going to hit in like a whole different way when you get to right. see him on the screen for sure. one last time. Um, but hearing about this film, hearing about this, the reviews, what does this make you think, Nick? I'm very happy just because like we know both of them were like good actors. I mean, Chadwick and the Black Panther cast won this, the Screen Actors Guild Award for best for best ensemble. Viola Davis has won and she's a triple crown where she won Emmy, Tony and Oscar. So like we know these are like capable people, but to hear like such good things about this film is like really exciting. This is another one that I feel could be um, put, put on the path to award season just because of like the nature of it. And I'm just, I'm just happy to, like, we've been hearing things about Chadwick's performance from a while now, but it was just kind of like a, I guess we'll just see it when we, when we're able to, but now just to hear so many people, like, like, it's not just him, like the rest of the film, Viola is like just so good. And he's, he still manages to like stand out. I'm just really excited. And just, man, like talk about like an exclamation point of like at the end of your, at the end of like a story, like just, like for the if the five bloods was like his last performance like that would still have been like great but to hear like that he may even be academy worthy academy like like win possible like knock on wood but i don't know it's just really it's just really nice to see and it'll be just like like uh an epic like just exclamation point to everything yeah a hundred percent and speaking of the five bloods and chadwick boseman we have a uh, spike lee to make a music musical about the origins origin story of viagra now three things i wouldn't hear i think i'd hear in the sentence are spike lee viagra and musical nick what were your thoughts when you first heard this did you think it was a joke because you I, 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 I did you could already see my reaction it was in a year of crazy news not just in like like the intense like news but just also in just crazy news in general like you remember that murder hornets like there was a few weeks of like that going around this had to be one of the most random things i've read in all of 2020 it's just like for spike lee to make a musical one is very interesting just because like he's in all the years he's done like a, like he's never done a musical it's just it's just been completely out of his wheelhouse so i guess in that way it's it was shocking already just because like He's going outside of his comfort zone, which I think is pretty exciting. I think I like, you know, I, I kind of thought about it. I was like, Spike Lee definitely has enough like distinct style and like, um, like I guess vibes to like, to help create a distinct musical. So I was like, that's pretty cool. That's interesting to see him go out there and do this. But then to make, to make it about Viagra, it was just one of the straight, like, <laughs> Like if they made like Ma, like we just mentioned like Ma Rainey a musical, it's like okay, fine. There are musical roots in the story they're telling. There is, there is like who is, who said we could tell the story about Viagra, but not only that, we can make it a musical. It's like, <laughs> it's like where, like how, where, like I'm not, I'm not saying this is gonna be a bad idea. I'm just saying it's one of the most random things I've, one of the most random pitches I've ever heard. 
in my life. It's just like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just a just a random like project. It's a musical about Viagra. A movie about Viagra in general, like a biopic drama, would have been one thing. But to make it a musical is hilarious. I, I like. I don't know. It's just gonna be, it's whenever this thing comes out, it's gonna be insane. I, I can't even. I can't picture it any other way. It's so nuts to me. It makes sense. It, it makes sense. The only thing, like Spike Lee in a musical, even though we haven't seen it before, I can picture it. Yeah. yeah. Like Spike Lee, I'm like, he has people talking into the camera, like looking it in the eyes. Think mm-hmm. about the Five Bloods and Delroy Lindo's character, who's probably the Oscar favorite as of right now. Right. Um, you know, he has that sort of meta ness to his films mm-hmm. uh, that I think musicals sometimes have. Mm-hmm. And I think he can really apply that. I think, I mean, it's Spike Lee, of course he can. He's a fantastic filmmaker. Right. I'm just curious, like, the origin story of Viagra, like, who, who, who in a million years would say, oh, yeah, that's the story I want to tell? Yeah, it's so funny that, like, here we are, like, like, like excited about, like, Mal- Malcolm and Marie's, like, spark of creativity. And then here's some, another person's spark of creativity <laughs> leads to a Viagra musical. And, like, again, it's not, like, I'm not trying to, like, talk bad about it it's just like who who would have who would have thought you know there must be some great script that he read about this film yeah because i was so surprised but we're gonna move on uh bullet train it adds lady gaga and logan lerman to the cast that already features brad pitt and wait wait if you thought it was that was already stacked it gets better it's directed by david leach and it also has joey king Aaron Taylor Johnson, Sazzy Beats, Brian Tyree Henry, um, Andrew Koji, Masioka, and two-time Oscar nominee Michael Shannon. That's an insane cast. And it, for those of you who are asking uh, what the film is exactly about, we've gotten a little bit of a vague description about the film. It seems to be something about a group of assassins who have different goals but are kind of put together. Uh, if I remember correctly, but mm-hmm. it seems like an interesting idea, but like a, a massive, yeah, the contained story follows a group of assassins with conflicting motives aboard a fast moving t- train in Tokyo. Right. That seems crazy to me with that cast. I mean, I'm, I'm a- like the more, like at first when it was just uh, Mr. Oscar winner himself, Mr. Brad Pitt um, involved with the project, I was kind of like, okay, like, like that's cool. Like he's like already like, like getting new projects. You know, not twenty nineteen was such a big year for him. But as there just more and more people kept coming, I was like, this is such a crazy combination of people. And like, and we're gonna we're gonna see some crazy casts in the upcoming year. We've already talked about like multiple times about like Eternals. We've talked about the Batman. Like, there's some crazy casts coming along, and like, just to have like, you no, know, like Joey King of the Kissing Booth, Brad Oscar win again, Oscar winner Brad Pitt. Um, I, I'm trying to recall everyone you just mentioned. Brian Tyree Henry from Atlanta and Spider Verse, right. Lady Kaga. Like, it's like, what a crazy group. And also, I just feel like, because David Leitch did, um, Leitch did Deadpool 2, he did Atomic Blonde. Like, we, I feel like we know the action is going to be good. We know the cast is capable and the potential of having it on, like, on, on a uh, concentrated single location. This could go like, really bad for whatever reason but this can also be like an insane like action like masterpiece for like whatever reason just because of the talent and the like who's being both in front and behind the camera yeah i mean this seems like a non-stop like thriller action film Mm -hmm. that the pacing is insane it's just event after event after event right so i'm really excited about that speaking of things i'm excited about a new trailer came out for pieces of a woman with vanessa kirby and shia labeouf uh, from what I depicted from the trailer, it, Vanessa Kirby, essentially, just her water breaks. She's trying to have a child. The child obviously passes away. And it's about the aftermath of uh, Vanessa Kirby and Shia LaBeouf's character dealing with the uh, uh, with a failed pregnancy mm-hmm. and the loss of a child and how that affects their life. And this trailer, to me, seems really powerful. Um, the even in a few, like these few short, small scenes, you get this feeling that Vanessa Kirby is going to bring you on like this crazy emotional journey. And Shia LaBeouf's been on fire as of the past right. two years. 
um, we talked about earlier, him and Robert Pattinson have had like this renaissance, but what are your thoughts on the film? I did not expect this from Vanessa Kirby, not to say like, I was like, like underestimating her, just I haven't seen her in enough of her work. Like I've only seen her in Mission Impossible Fallout, which she was great in, and in her small supporting role. She was in Hobbs and Shaw again, entertaining in a supporting role, but I just haven't seen her in like a full on dramatic role. And she looks to like, from what I've read and from what she seems on camera, she looks to be like completely like owning the whole role. She looks to be like, so in that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this is another potential like a cat like academy nomination like um just because like just from the the na- like the nature of the story like like lo- like losing a life like that like that that is a foundation for such strong emotions and i feel like kirby hit like from the trailer like, kirby looks to hit, like go through so much and yeah like shia labeouf like man <laughs> what a what a what a past two years he's been having he was in Another film this year called The Tax Collector. Not one of the best films, but he had a he was a great performance there. He had Honey Boy and um, Peanut Butter the other Falcon. One? Peanut Butter Falcon last year, and like it's just great to see him going the Rob Pat route of just like throwing himself into these like r- these like um, unpredictable roles. So that's a this is a duo like Malcolm and Marie. Like this is a duo to watch out for. Very excited to see. This is on Netflix too, I believe. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, that's correct. But yeah, it's coming on Netflix. Like, so we'll be able to easy access to watch it. I don't know. I, I, this is a this is a this is a hell of a duo. This is gonna be an intense story. We'll just ah oh man. <laughs> I'm just like picturing myself like watching it. I'm gonna know. I'm gonna get like it's gonna be a whole like roller coaster and a whole a uh, whole just you know force. Yeah, and we have to give credit to Netflix. Netflix this year has a really strong lineups of films that it's acquired and it's produced by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really stepped up its game and it still needs to step up its game to be honest with yeah. how much content it creates for these new films that are coming out. Yeah. So speaking of Netflix, we have another film starring Camila Mendez and uh, Maya Hawk as they team up for a psychological thriller. Now you saw the trailer. What were your thoughts? Well, uh, it wasn't a trailer more say, it was an announcement. There hasn't been any of, I don't think they've started yet because I know both of them. But um, My Heart Belongs is uh, currently shooting Stranger Things season four. Camila Mendez is currently shooting Riverdale season six or whatever. But I will say like, I think this is an interesting one to know just because My Heart was really good in Stranger Things season three when she was introduced. She's Ethan Hawke's daughter. She takes after him a lot in the talent. So I'm intrigued to see how she does. As for Camila Mendez, don't let the Riverdale credit like uh like drag away from her. She was in Palm Springs. She slowly like like a uh, like I I admit I watched like the first scenes of of seasons of Riverdale before I gave up. But like I feel like with the Riverdale cast, like a lot of it was like writing wise that never allowed them to properly tap into what they were all capable of. So I think like this is a chance, especially since Camila Mendez was like I said in Palm Springs. Like she's branching out. I think this is a great chance for her to start showing what she's capable of along with my hawk and i also know i read in the description they were pulling a lot from alfred hitchcock who's one of my favorite directors so i know just that on me on a personal level is just really exciting because i know you know he's such a he was such a great director and if you want to pull from him then there's no, there's not a better source of influence to do so yeah but a lot of pressure comes with that yes very i mean, much so, very much I mean so. a lot of people can say they're going to be alfred hitchcock but i mean there's only one of him for a reason this uh, is true as well, yeah. he's next level as far as filmmakers go mm. but that's crazy i was like camille mendez i'm not sold on her and then you said she's from palm springs and it kind of clicked i was like oh that's her mm. she, she was very good in palm springs so definitely worth it if you're not on the hype train of riverdale which i'm personally not there's no need to get on there anymore but yeah but um, good to see her branching out, like I said. Yeah. Uh, and with that, that wraps up this episode of Movie News. Uh, leave us a comment down below if you had any thoughts on any of the subjects. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.